So today we're taking the rig to storage, get it all ready, get it ready for the road, mm -hmm. and then let the journey continue. Buy all the parts we need. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, that's a great point. What we can do is while we drop it off, we're going to show you guys exactly what you need for day one. Yes. All the day one items before you move into your brand new rig. I know you're excited. We're excited for you. Yep. But the, before you move in and put all your stuff in there, there's a couple of things you're going to need to do yeah. on day one. And remember, it only comes with a power cable, nothing else. That's right. So, yep. Yep, everything that you finance plus a power cable. That's it. <laughs> Maybe a bucket. <laughs> everything else comes from Amazon and box stores. Yes. And that's what we're here for. We're yes. here to help guide you through that process. So let's jump in the new rig, head over to the storage unit, and start going. So number one on our list starts before you even walk into the rig. It's an outdoor mat that you attach directly to your stairs. Uh, we actually have this for our fifth wheel as well. So it doesn't really matter if you're getting a class A, class C, a travel trailer, they directly attach. And it's definitely something you want to add to your list. Um, you don't have to store it. It just stays where it's at and it's easy. number two on our list is so important. Uh, we have it also in the fifth wheel, like I said before, all these items we're talking about, um, doesn't matter if it's a travel trailer, class A or class C, um, it's actually a uh, water leak monitor. Uh, we have them throughout our rig under the sinks, um, you know, in the kitchen, the bathroom, we even put them underneath the belly just to make sure if there's any leak anywhere, they will screech at you and it's super loud. So definitely add this to your list, very important. So number three on our list is actually a strainer. It's called a tub shroom. It goes in your shower. They typically typically come with this little metal one, but it doesn't last very long and still hair slips through it. This really does catch everything in the middle and it's such a bonus when you don't have hair clog up your pipes. You don't want to have that happen to you, especially in an RV. You can't really, how do you get down there? It's not like at home with the same plumbing. So this we definitely recommend. We've used ours for three years and we've never had clogging issues. So definitely add this on to your list. You can get those uh, either at Walmart or uh, we do have it in our Amazon store. And uh, yeah, they work perfectly. Bonus tip that I have for you, since we've been uh, RVing for three years, one of the items that I absolutely love is one of these strainers. Um, what's great about it, it catches all the food items that you don't want in your tank, but it doesn't close uh, the uh, stopper. There's no stopper in it, so the water won't come up. And uh, it's silicone, so you can turn it inside out and it's super easy to clean. So I really, I really recommend you to add that to your list as well. Um, it's not an expensive item and it really does help keep those, uh, uh, what do you call them? Water tanks clean. <laughs> Huge bonus tip from me personally, and I wish somebody would have told me about that before, is these velvet hangers. I mean, the rigs, they just rattle down the road and all your clothes will just fall right off and that happened to me. Um, so these have velvet covered, uh, they're covered in velvet, so it, it's fantastic. So your shirts are safe, they're not gonna end up on the floor uh, when you park. So this is definitely something you should add to your list. All right, another bonus tip, um, usually the rigs come with a regular shower head like this. Um, I actually recommend getting a low flow shower head. Uh, a lot of the parks have bad water pressure and it just helps kind of disperse the water a little better, better and it doesn't just trickle out. And also if you'd like to boondock or you know something happens and you need to use your fresh water tank, um, you're not using up so much water uh, for one shower. So this is definitely a something you should add to your list as soon as you can. All right, let's continue on our list of top 10 day one items that you need. The rest, it's all outside. All right, number four on our list is all about water. 
once you pull into the campground and you get set up, you got to hook up the water. One important tip is to make sure that you get yourself something that's easy to use. Don't get the hard plastic and hard rubber hoses. Make sure you get something that's pliable because remember, you're going to have to fold it up. This one, this Evo Flex, it's a 50 foot. A lot of people want to get 25 feet, but from three years of experience, go for the 50 foot because you never know what type of RV park space you're going to be in. So definitely get something you can use. The second thing is this is a water safe drinking hose. Make sure you guys find that. Don't just grab a garden hose out there because it's not safe for drinking. So this one is foolproof. The next is make sure you have a filter. Now you can pick these filters up anywhere on probably pretty much any box store. Make sure you pick up a filter because there's so many different filtration systems out there. But this right here, put it outside. Make sure that you add it to your arsenal, to your toolkit of water. Uh, filtration because this right here is just going to be your first line of defense so it doesn't matter what you put afterwards put this in the beginning so do you know why when you put a brand new filter on you have to run water through it no nope. turn it on slowly <gasps> Ew. is that cool yeah i don't want to drink that Yep, you got to run it through so that you can flush out all that charcoal. Water pressure is by far your worst enemy. It's number one because what's happening is water pressure, you have to understand how it works. All RV parks are going to be pulling city water from wherever it comes from and they're going to push it with high pressure to go to every single one of your RV sites. So the RV pressure that's there is pretty much, I'm not going to say it's unregulated, but it's not always great for your rig. You might be at a water uh, site, at your RV site, and find out that the pressure is probably 100 PSI. Well, what's happening is inside your rig, what you have is PEX pipes, and those shouldn't go over 50 to 60 PSI. Anything more than that, and the plastic's going to swell. So what you want is you want one of these variable pressure regulators and we picked one up on Amazon this Renator it's easy it, you put it in line you make sure but one of the best things about this is that you have control of your water pressure and you also have a gauge so you can twist this knob right here on the outside and allow your pressure to go up and down so if you want 10 psi 20 psi 50 psi whatever you want you're the one making the determination so make sure you pick one of these up pressure filtration and having the right water hose that's all about water all right number five on our list is bug screens bug screens are absolutely a day one item because it's so easy to install and just leave it there and forget about it bug screens are going to cover all of the types of openings that you have on your rig and remember every rv is different but a lot of them are the same especially when it comes to water heaters and furnaces and a lot of these standard open items here you can see that on the water heater, great for when you're doing your servicing, but it also has this opening that you wanna make sure that you put a cover on and protect because bugs are gonna be crawling all over your rig no matter what part of the country you're in. One of the highest maintenance costs in any RV is just critters crawling into these pipes where you have all of your propane burning or whatever you have crawling into these pipes and building nests. And that right there is an easy prevention. So make sure you get something to cover each of these. Be on your way. All right, number six on our list is absolutely having a good pair of chalks. From day one, make sure you guys get a great set of chalks. And remember, the bigger the tire, the bigger the chalk. Those are invaluable. Once you disconnect, this right here, these travel trailers, they're going to move because not all RV park uh, pads are level. You'll find that out as you go through. So making sure you have a set of chalks because you need to make sure that you prevent the rig from moving forward and aft. So one's not going to work. You need two for good safe operation. Good set of chalks. Make sure you guys pick those up. So number seven on our list of top 10 things that you need on day one is actually something that everybody puts off to day number two or day number 200. And that is a tire pressure monitor system or TPMS. We cannot overstate again that a tire pressure monitor system from day one is your biggest asset. And the reason for that is you, you need to know what's happening with your tires. 
So we just got on the road and tire pressure monitor system is going off right now. We have a complete flat, almost blowout. It's absolutely zero PSI in that tire. So I have no idea what's going on. All right, number eight on our list is the infamous poop hose or sewer hose as it's commonly called. And I actually have a spare right here. And don't worry guys, this is absolutely new. It's our spare. Yes, you need one. This right here represents pretty much every sewer hose out there. There's a couple of common things and there's a couple of things that are different. The common things are the fact that most of them are gonna be bayonet style, which kind of looks like this right here, bayonet style. The other type is threaded. They also all are about a three inch diameter hose. So that's where the common uh, elements are. The only difference after that is actually what it's made of. So that comes in a host of different materials, but it's still gonna be a bayonet and three inch diameter. One of the things that I would say, never mix match your sewer hoses. There's a very important part. I'm gonna show you exactly why. This is a day one item. Best tip is just go to a box store and pick up a pack that has two of these and a 90 degree attachment for the actual dump tube at the RV parks. That right there will get you started and then you can do whatever you want after that. Day two comes into all of the different uh, ramps that you're gonna buy, adapters that you're gonna buy, spare seals, and all the things that only you know what you need for your rig. But absolutely, you're gonna need something on day one. Also, it's very important that everyone realize that the entire life of URVing is designed for one thing, to not have a poopsie. The poopsie is the one thing that everyone wants to avoid. No one wants to have that campfire story. I feel in this video, we try to show you guys not just what we think you need on day one, but show you why you need it from experience in our travels. And I need to show you exactly what a poopsie looks like. So if you have a weak stomach or you have kids in the room, go ahead and pause this video or fast forward because in about three seconds, I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to us. Take a look. I was just about to have lunch. Well, that's close. Since we're already talking about poop, um, there's something behind me that you definitely have to have on your list before you go on your first trip, and that is the, uh, uh, what do you call them? Treatment. Treatment tabs. Um, they have all kinds of different ones. I like the lavender ones. I don't think it matters really much because it just goes in your tank, but I just like the color of the package. <laughs> Makes no sense, but that's me. Um, we use the uh, ones from TST a lot of times. We've had great success with those, So, um, but there are so many different kinds. So whatever you like the best, um, uh, just go ahead and get those, but you do have to have those tabs. All right, number nine on our list is surge protection. We highly advise everyone out there, if you're buying a rig on day one, get an EMS or a surge protector. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what's the difference? A surge protector is just that. It's just gonna protect when you have voltage spikes. It'll also tell you if there's other things wrong, but it's not gonna do anything about it. An electrical management system or EMS, like this one right here from Progressive Industries, this actually monitors a host of different things. It'll monitor reverse polarity, open neutrals, open grounds, voltage too high, voltage too low. All these things, this is actively monitoring. And if it runs into any of those issues, it will not let any of the electricity pass through. And that's very important. And that's one of the things that we invested in is just to make sure that we had it from day one. This was one of the first things we bought. We've used it for three years straight. It is fantastic. In fact, there were five instances over the last three years where this right here, when we plugged it into the post, it immediately told us that we had reverse polarity. And every one of those cases, the rig before us during the summer months actually burnt the wiring in the post. And the guy, the technician that came out, put in a new breaker, but reversed the wires. 
So these right here, it didn't let anything pass through to affect our rig. It was absolutely worth the money. Um, regardless, whether it's a surge protector or a full EMS system, make sure you guys have one of those because voltage does spike. You can't predict it, but you wanna make sure you stay safe out there and protect your investment. Every time we get to a new site, I uh, always check if the power is on or off because I don't wanna get electrocuted when I plug something in. Um, this was actually the first park that had them all on, so somebody didn't do their job, just saying. But yeah, so, uh, and then I put the surge protector in just to make sure that the power is good before we plug in the rig. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's heavy. Ooh, there we go. And then we will turn it on the 50 amp. And it will say 50 on there, so you'll know which one is the right one. So now it's gonna tell us um, if this power source is good to go. And we always wait for the message E0, which we just got. Yes. So now we gotta turn it back off so we can plug the power plug in here and into the rig. So let's go ahead and do that. So we made it to number 10 on our list and it is actually the most important. And it's something that a lot of people don't even think about. Every brand new rig by law is gonna come with a fire extinguisher and that's a huge bonus. The problem is there's only one. Even in our rig, we have 43 feet of fifth wheel. There's only one fire extinguisher. The problem with that is if a fire starts, God forbid anything happens to anyone on the road, but if it does start, it's gonna go quick and you do not have time to do anything other than get out of the rig. But if something happens and you need to put out that fire, what you don't want is the only fire extinguisher you have to be in the front of the rig where the fire is. So make sure you go to any box store, go to anywhere and get a second fire extinguisher. Best advice for us, if you have one in the front mounted, then go put one in the back. That right there is a huge safety tip. Be safe on the road, inexpensive, but invaluable. So we hope that our list of day one items that you need when you start your RV journey really helps. They were quick, they were easy, and they're all simple solutions that you can do on day one before you ever move into your rig. And most of them are so simple and inexpensive and they help you so much. And that's why we said, you know what? We got to mm -hmm. share it with our viewers. We love you guys and we hope you're going to have an amazing time RVing. And we know you will. We'll see you on the road.